The New York Times, sir. The Times? You've heard nothing from the police? Not yet, sir. I'm not at home to anyone, Fletcher. Very good, sir. Oh, wait a minute, Fletcher. You'd better reconsider, Father. Why? The power of the press and all that. We don't want them printing wild rumors. It's best to give them the facts of this, um, this unfortunate affair. Perhaps you're right. Hello. Yes, this is Roger Tracy. Mr. Tracy, is it true that your daughter Patricia left Ian Blair waiting at the church this morning? <laughs> of course it isn't true. Wedding simply has been uh, temporarily postponed. Our informant tells us, sir, that your daughter disappeared ten minutes before the ceremony was to take place. Your informant is misinformed, young man. My daughter simply had a headache and went to her room. And you admit she did run out on her wedding? I admit nothing. It's disgraceful. Disgraceful that Patricia should do a thing like this. What has happened to the tradition of propriety in this family? Janice, what are you doing with those flowers? I'm getting rid of them. Orange blossoms remind me of my own wedding. This family is certainly unlucky with weddings. When I think of what you married... Now, Father, I thought we were both going to forget that. But Patricia, jilting Ian Blair, I can't imagine what she was thinking of. Her future, no doubt. Don't be facetious, Janice. Ian is a fine, attractive, companionable young man. He has charm, character, intelligence, breeding. And money. He has gobs of it. His pockets are filled with gold. What's wrong with money? Nothing. I love the stuff myself. Pat just doesn't seem to have the same regard for it that I do. That's the trouble with her. She has peculiar attitudes about a lot of things. But I'm not going to let her make the same mistake you did. Which one in particular are you referring to? Letting a man marry you for your money. Oh, but, Dad, you surely don't expect to find a man in this world who doesn't love money. It was my misfortune that the one I married, in addition to this universal vice, was also a stinker. Well, that's just the point. Ian has plenty of... Ian has plenty of money of his own. When he asked Patricia to marry him, I knew it had to be because he loved her. There's just one little detail that you've overlooked, Father. Pat doesn't love him. Then why'd she accept him? You accepted him. She just agreed with you. That's not true. I want Patricia to be happy above everything else. Well, then let her go her own way. And have her make the same mistake you did? Nothing doing. Oh. Miss Patricia and her husband. So that's what they did. They eloped. Well, Dad, we're married. Congratulations. Fletcher the champagne. Yes, congratulations. Where is he? Where is who? Ian, your husband. This is my husband. Jonesy, this is my father, and that's my sister, Janet. Your, your husband? Well, well, who is he? What is he? I'm a taxi cab driver. A taxi cab driver? You mean to say, Patricia? Father, give him back his drink. I don't believe you're married. This is all a hoax. I am now Mrs. Kenneth Jones. Yes, sir. We're married. I, I don't understand. I, I've never seen this man before. I've known him a long time, Father. How? Where did you meet him? He's been driving me in his cab for the past two years. My stand is just around the corner. I'm not interested in where you park your cab. I'm interested in how my daughter got into it. Well, I was cruising down 8th Avenue one night when Pat whistled. Whistled? You know, Fletcher, more champagne. Yeah, she whistled. So I pulled over to the curb and she got in. Well, she was just another passenger to me. Then I drove her home. Then we found out we were neighbors. I lived here and his den was just around the corner. And that's why you jilted Ian Blair. Well, Father, I thought we might stay here with you. But if you're going to be insulting, we'll live elsewhere. You just can't seem to understand. We love each other. Come on, Jonesy. Wait a minute, Patricia. I'm sorry if I was rude. After all, this is quite a shock. Of course, I want you to live with me. 
Oh, thank you, Father. I knew you'd see it our way. Come on, Jonesy, I'll show you to our suite. Fletcher, find a dinner jacket for Mr. Jones. Very good, sir. And incidentally, uh, call the police and inform them that my daughter is back. Yes. Father, I see the witch's cauldron in your eye. What's brewing? Did you notice the way he gulped down that champagne? <laughs> and the way he sniffed at this cigar like a bird dog? Father? It cost me 100000 to get rid of your husband. I think this egg will crack for twenty-five. Oh, you just never understand. Can't you see they're desperately in love? You're a terrible liar, aren't you? Why do you say that? Telling your father you've been riding around my camp for two years. Two months is closer to it. Oh, but I feel like I know you for two years. You're the only one I've ever really been able to talk to. Yeah, I know. The backseat of a taxi cab is the biggest competition of the psychiatrist cops. As long as that meter keeps ticking, you have our ears. But, uh... Um, Baby, the meter stopped ticking. Oh, what about all the times I sat in that back seat and listened to all your troubles? I thought you liked me and wanted to help me, Jonesy. I do, but it's time for me to go home and I want my thousand bucks. But I need you here for three days. Three days? Hey, look, I was just supposed to come here to meet your father, that's all. Was that the agreement? Let's recapitulate. When you jumped into my cab this morning and shouted, Step on it, Jonesy, I stepped on it. And it cost me ten bucks for speeding. Next, you made me buy you coffee and cake. That cost a buck and a quarter with the tip. Then, with those dreamy eyes of yours, you talked me into marrying you temporarily to get you out of marrying some guy you didn't want to. The contract called for me to meet your father, for you to show him a marriage license, for me to collect a thousand bucks, and then for me to go home. But our marriage has to last for three days. Fork over a thousand bucks. Look at that profile. How would you like to have to look at that breakfast, dinner, and supper? Through storm and sleet and hail and gloom of night. Well, maybe you can learn to move around in the dark. What about this myth that the knights of the road will always help someone in distress? Aren't you a knight of the road? Truck drivers, baby. Truck drivers are knights of the road. I am a cabbie. Drive by day. Please, Jonesy. Just don't sentence me to this for the rest of my life. Just three days. What difference could three days make? Well, in three days, uh, this man is going to leave the country. He's going to be out of my life forever. Uh, I think he's, he's going to England on a diplomatic mission. Once he leaves the country, Father won't be able to do a thing, even if he finds out about our arrangement. Okay. Three days, then I collect my thousand bucks. Oh, thank you, Jonesy. Thank you. That's a nice setup you got here. Relax on this. I'm sure you'll find it comfortable. When you bring your things in, you can hang them in there. Uh, where do I shave? What? Oh, in there. It's yours exclusively. That's my apartment. I have a separate entrance, so I won't have to disturb you. I take it we have a clear understanding? Yeah. I knew there'd be small print somewhere in the contract. Why don't you relax for a while? If you need me, knock. Well, Mrs. Jones. Now that you have a Mr. Jones, just what do you intend doing with him? 
I'm going to try to get him to approve of me. Get him to approve of you? He thinks I'm a spoiled child. What? He's told me that I'm an inconsiderate, selfish, arrogant monster with gold dust in her bloodstream. He thinks I'm a terrible liar, too. Well, I'm glad to see your marriage is getting off to a good start. With me, it's a marriage. With him, it's a temporary legal arrangement for a fee. So, it was all a trick to get out of that merger with Ian. Well, I'm disappointed, darling. I, I thought you were in love with him. Oh, I am, Jan. Terribly in love. And I want to stay married to him. Well, good heavens, why? I if he only married you for a fee. I only have three days to make this marriage work. Will you help me, Jan, if I call on you? You can count on me, kid. But keep your eyes on Father. I think he's trying to blow up your marriage. Hi, Fletch. I didn't expect to find you there, sir. Neither did I. Uh, yes, sir. I brought you some cocktails, sir. Oh, fine. But, uh, what's that? Mr. Tracy prefers formal dress at dinner, sir. Oh, so he sent that monkey suit up to me, huh? Doesn't he ever get tired of running people's lives? Hmm? Not bad. Not bad. If I may be permitted to say so, sir, it's the best imported fabric. <laughs> well, Fletcher, here's to the best imported fabric. But, Mrs. Jones, sir. Mrs. Jones and I never drink together. Well, thank you, sir. To all the good things in life. Well. I beg your pardon, madam. <laughs> it's all right, baby. Fletch and I were just downing one to our happiness. So? Here's to us. Dinner is served. Thank you, Fletcher. Thank you, sir. Come on, Jonesy. Get dressed. Be long, Fletcher? I believe not, sir. Remember, Fletcher, wait for signals from me. Very good, sir. Father, I warn you, if you're planning a counterattack, I'm on Pat's side. I'm sorry we're late. Well, greetings, bridegroom. You look très magnifique. <laughs> you're a doll. You certainly look good in that dinner jacket, uh, son. There's nothing like wearing fine clothes, is there? You can say that again. Caviar, sir? Oh, thank you, Fletch. Trust you find yourself comfortable in our home? Yeah, it's kind of nice when you don't have to sweat out the rent. You, uh, like the caviar? I get used to it. Uh, why don't we start dinner? I'm starved. Not so fast. I hardly know your husband. Let's get acquainted first. Let's toast the bride and groom. Can't we do that after dinner? And don't rush it, baby. Boards, 1928. You know, I haven't had imported champagne in my life. I guess a cab driver's salary can't buy everything. He's a medical student, Father. I'm uh, working my way through college. You mean... Uh... Working as a cab driver is going to permit you to uh, 
equip a medical office too? Well, I pick up an odd job every once in a while. Uh, and he's going to make a very good doctor too. Uh, what kind of a doctor are you going to be, son? Huh? Oh, um, general practitioner. Why don't you throw away that homemade cigarette and try one of my special brand? Thank you. I don't think you're very funny, Father. Oh, he's just initiating Jonesy into gracious living. Oh, no, I don't know why you girls should be so sarcastic to your daddy. Don't let him trick you, Jonesy. He's an ogre. An ogre? Champagne, caviar, cigars, a house like this? Why, it's great. But don't get used to it, son. I'm cutting Pat off without a penny. <coughs> you mean she's broke? That's what I mean. You, you mean she hasn't even got a thousand bucks? I have a thousand dollars. Don't I, Jan? Yes, she has. And if she hasn't, I'll lend it to her. But what's a thousand dollars? You can hardly buy a stethoscope with that these days. Let's be practical, young man. You've worked very hard to put yourself through school. If you saddle yourself with a poor wife, you'll never get a start. What do you mean, if? He has a wife. That can be annulled. Young man, why deny yourself the accoutrements of fine living? Father, stop trying to bribe him. A decently equipped medical office nowadays would cost you a minimum of, uh... Fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah, it would. I'm willing to give you a check right now for fifteen thousand dollars if the marriage is annulled. Think of it, young man. Fluoroscope, fully equipped laboratory, x-ray machine. You left out metabolism, father. I always did want to take my own x-rays. Jonesy. No deal. All right. I admire a good businessman. $25,000. Father, how dare you? Father, that's a contemptible trick. Yeah, it's a good word for you. Contemptible. Trying to buy a guy off in front of your daughters. No wonder they have no respect for you. You know, there are a few things in life besides money. Give it to him, Jonesy. Well, Father, you've lost. I hope you realize now that a man can marry your daughter for herself and not for her money. You... You mean you think she has to have money to get a guy to marry her? You mean a sweet, lovely girl isn't enough by herself? Any guy that wouldn't marry her just as she stands there is crazy. Hip, hip, hooray for Jonesy. It's the telephone. Mr. Ian Blair for Miss Patricia. I don't want to talk to him. I'll talk to him. No, I'll talk to him. In the library. Father, you're not going to have him come here. Of course not. I'm going to tell him that my daughter is married. What? I'm beginning to like that young man very much. Did you really mean all those things you said? What things? You know, about I wouldn't need money for a guy to marry me. About me being a sweet, lovely girl and that any man who wouldn't want to be married to me would be crazy. I'd never say anything I don't mean. Well, that's one of the things I like about you, Jonesy. Straight from the shoulder and down to earth. I must say, Ian took it like a man. He asked me to go fishing with him next week. Well, how can he go fishing if he's leaving for England in three days? Uh, let's have dinner. I'm starved. Isn't he leaving for England? Why would he go to England? On a diplomatic mission. Well, that'd be one sure way to end 150 years of friendship with England. My boy, whatever made you think that Ian Blair was in the diplomatic service? He's in the manufacturing business. Chlorophyll. 
He makes chlorophyll. So, you're still a terrible liar. A spoiled child who would do anything to get her own way. Three days, and I fell for it. But, Jonesy... Mr. Tracy, does that offer still stand? What offer? Don't play coy with me. You offered me 25000 if I was willing to an owl. Okay, I'm willing. Well, it still stands, if that's what you want. That's what I want. Jonesy, wait! Jonesy, wait! You see, Jan, I was right in the first place. He cracked for 25000 Please forgive me, Jonesy. That's been your trouble. You've been forgiven too much. I've never wanted to be forgiven more than right this minute. Nothing doing. That's why you're so fresh to your father, because he lets you get away with murder. The poor guy's methods may be all wrong, but at least he tries to do what he thinks is right for his kid. And what does he get in return? A liar. I need you for three days. Then I'll be safe. He, he's leaving for England on a diplomatic mission. And me willing to give up 25000 to give you those three days. Why do you think I lied? Because it's a habit, I suppose. Because I love you, you lug. You... you love me? Why do you think I rode in that drafty cab? Night after night, through all that horrid traffic. I wanted to be near you. Even with all the noise and the horns and the whistles. You love me. That's why I lied about those three days. I felt that in three days, I could make you love me. Well, one thing I didn't lie about is a thousand dollars. You wear glasses? Why not? Why didn't you wear them before? You know what they say about girls who wear glasses. I was afraid you wouldn't make any passes. Oh, baby. I fell in love with you the day you whistled at me on 8th Avenue. Oh, Jonesy. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? No, I was just thinking about that 25,000 bucks. Well, isn't it worth it? Yeah. I never dreamed love could be so expensive. Oh, well. Will there be anything else tonight, sir? You'd better wait up and see Mr. Jones out. Is Mr. Jones leaving, sir? I'm afraid he is. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. I'm sorry too, Fletcher. I was beginning to like that boy. So was I. Good night, sir. Good night. Be sure to see Hamilton's new line of beautiful watches at modest prices. Illinois watches.
Now you can buy a truly fine watch for as little as $33.95. An Illinois watch, backed and guaranteed by Hamilton, the most trusted name in watches. There are many handsome Illinois watches for men and a full selection of exquisite watches for women. Illinois watches include shockproof, waterproof, and self-winding models. See them at your jewelers. And remember, Illinois watches are guaranteed by Hamilton, the most trusted name in watches.